Now at 6 and streaming on CrossroadsToday.com, a Victoria man arrested and charged with murder. U.S. Marshals arrest a Quero man in connection with a shooting in Pennsylvania. And a fourth teen now charged in an assault case in Jackson County. Well, it's a sight for sore eyes, clouds, and a little rain around here. Had some today. We'll have more tomorrow. How long will this great streak last? We'll have all that coming up. And the Houston Texans lock up their top draft pick with a first in franchise history. That and more in sports. You're watching 25 News Now at 6. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Don Brubaker. Karina Garcia has the night off. Authorities have charged this man with murder. 50-year-old Willard Willis Baugh also charged with aggravated assault against a public servant and tampering with evidence. Police say it happened Saturday around 11 a.m. in the 4500 block of North John Stockbauer Drive. The woman killed, identified as 44-year-old Brandy Baugh, Willard Baugh held out bond. A fourth teen now charged in an assault case in Jackson County. Braxton Warren charged with engaging an organized criminal activity assault. He has bonded out of jail. He and three other teens charged in the case. They were all baseball players for Industrial ISD. The incident happened on April 27th. U.S. Marshals arrested 21-year-old Joseph Rivera at a home in the 600 block of East Morgan in Cuero Friday. Rivera accused of firing several rounds into a Lancaster, Pennsylvania home last year, striking a juvenile who was not the intended victim. Rivera faces attempted criminal homicide and two other charges. Rivera is now out on bond in Victoria County for unlawful carrying of a weapon. Rivera transported to the DeWitt County Jail, where he will await extradition to Pennsylvania. The Victoria ISD is a specially called board meeting tomorrow to fill the District 2 seat. The meeting starts at 5.30 p.m. at the Victoria ISD Administration Building, 102 Profit Drive. There are three District 2 applicants, Emmett Alvarez, Bridget Marshall, and Andrew Rokovich. Adolf Robles has removed himself from the race. Estela de los Santos resigned earlier this month to avoid a conflict of interest regarding a family member who is interested in working for the district. Here's your viewer poll this evening. Scan that QR code on your screen to vote now. Here's the question. Who do you want to see appointed to fill the District 2 seat? Emmett Alvarez, Bridget Marshall, or Andrew Rokovich? Let's look at the numbers. 21% of the voters say Emmett Alvarez. 3% say Bridget Marshall, 72% going with Andrew Rokovich. We thank you for voting. We want to hear from you. Come to CrossroadsToday.com slash vote to take part. We'll have an update on 25 News now at 10. Sunday's storm caused several traffic signals to go out in Victoria. It also caused this tree damage north of Zach Lenz Parkway and east of North Navarro Street. The Refugio County Press reports winds over 40 miles an hour hit Beeville Sunday. Authorities said high winds there caused several power and telephone poles to break on the northern end of Beeville. Now let's take a first look at your forecast. Here's first warn storm team chief meteorologist Mac Pettis. Mac really liked the rain yesterday, but I'm not really crazy about this damage going on with the high winds. No, but you know, Don, a rose has thorns, you know? It's a beautiful thing, it's lovely. When was the last time we saw any nice rain around here? But it does come with a thorn, so uh, hopefully uh, you didn't have any serious damage around your house. We had more showers rolling around the area today. We'll get the totals coming up, but uh, the good news is that we have about three days of this, uh, what I call good old fashioned summer weather, not that dome of doom that we've had for the last month. We'll have more in your forecast coming up in a moment. Mac, thank you. The Biden administration and Governor Greg Abbott may soon face off in court over the governor's recent action at the southern border. Earlier this month, Governor Abbott ordered buoys installed across the Rio Grande to keep immigrants from crossing. The Biden administration says the state did not have authorization and gave Governor Abbott until this afternoon to commit to removing the buoys or face a lawsuit. In response, the governor wrote, quote, Mr. President, Texas will see you in court, unquote. The Biden administration answered by suing Texas. 
and the continuing story about the sudden resignation of Texas A&M University President Elizabeth Banks. The Texas Tribune reported black students at the university now left without representation of someone who has the experience of a faculty member who cares about what she does and someone who genuinely loves her field. Catherine Banks' resignation comes after a backlash of how the university handled the recruitment of Professor Kathleen McElroy. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. Hit the like button and click the notification bell. Then you, on YouTube, you can see us at Crossroads Today. And stay with us coming up on 25 News Now at 6. Cheese was stopped at the Texas-Mexico border. Something more than cheese was found in that bundle. Also ahead, parents in Harlingen desperately trying to get their infant out of a hot car. Edwin Gregrick is your military hero for the month of July. Edwin was born in Ganado and was active in sports, playing football and track, and then enlisted in the United States Army in 1946. At this time, many were drafted in the Army, but Edwin liked the idea of getting his college paid for, so he enlisted. After basic training, I went to the Army Medical School for enlisted personnel. And there we were taught like anatomy and physiology of the human body of all the parts and what they did. Edwin would become an Army medic and was sent overseas to the Philippines taking care of soldiers. Edwin was later transferred to Japan from the Philippines, a time he'll never forget because the trek to Japan was done on a tugboat. And they put us on, they took, transferred 10 of us out of there, and they put us on a uh, Seagoin tugboat that had accommodations for a crew of three. And they put 10 of us on there, and we stayed on there for three days and almost three nights. And when we landed in uh, Okinawa, it was like cold. They had a, co a cold front came through there. And it was like 35 degrees, and it was kind of a misty, heavy fog and rain. And then this captain of this of this uh, tugboat pulled in his dock there, and he said, "This is as far as I'm taking you, folks." He said, "I called uh, the hospital, and they're gonna come pick you up." But I said, "In the meantime, I want you to stay right here on this dock. Don't go anywhere. Don't take, don't set foot above anywhere." off of this dock. Don't go over there to that building or walk on that lawn over there because there's lots of unexploded war toys there. In Japan, he would do intakes of soldiers, figuring out what was wrong with them and then send them to the correct doctor. From there, he was transferred to the 609 Quartermaster Graves Registration in Manila, Philippines, where he would identify the skeletal remains of soldiers to make sure those bodies got back to their families as well as to bury the dead a more grim side of the military many are probably unaware of. I presume that most of the people don't know anything about graves registration, and I didn't either until I was part of it. When I got to this grave registration place, it was about 15 miles out in the country, out of Manila there, in 15 miles from nowhere. It was way, way out there. Yeah. And it is a huge, huge cemetery. It's probably the biggest cemetery I have ever seen in my life. It was probably more than a half a mile wide and more than a mile long. And it was called World Cemetery because anybody that died as a result of World War II, regardless of who they were, what they did, or anything else, they were, buried, they, had a, they were privileged of being buried there. And there were a lot of Americans buried there. It wasn't exactly what he wanted to do, but it was his task, and he rose to the occasion to serve his country. Yeah, well, that, that's what I was, that's what I was assigned to, and you didn't have no choice. That's what you did. You went and did what they said. Edwin briefly went to Papua New Guinea, sent to recover the remains of soldiers who were in a B-17 bomber, which had crashed there. But the mission had to be scrapped, and it might surprise you as to why. We got all that lined up, and we were getting ready to go, and then it. The day we were supposed to go, this guide come by, he said, he's not going to go there. We said, why? He said, well, he talked to a village uh, chief about 15 miles from where we were, and he t told me about, uh, he knew about that airplane and where it was and everything I needed to know about it. But he said, don't go there because there's cannibals there. So we had to, we had to scratch the 
my project. After the military, Edwin went to pharmacy school at UT in Austin, and he didn't hold it against me that I'm a Sooner. So, Edwin, this is for you. Hook 'em horns. And uh, we processed a lot, lots of remains. And then I, w I was sent home and discharged in uh, 49. And I went to college and went to pharmacy school and started practicing pharmacy in 53. After college, he worked in retail and hospital pharmacies for much of his career before retiring in 2006. Edwin will be 95 next month and still gets around just fine. He's been attending an exercise class three times a week since the 90s. It's probably why he's in such great shape. See, I go to exercise three times a week to Detroit Health Center. And she and I have been in this since 19... 1999. Wow. Yeah. So you've been going to exercise class for over 20 years. What's that? You've been in that class for over 20 years. 20, close to 24 years, yeah, 1999. Um, three times a week, one hour, uh, three, uh, hour, hour Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, mm -hmm. for three times a week. Edwin has two sons and a daughter and two granddaughters and still stays plenty busy, saying that whatever it takes to get him off the couch. Well, uh, I'm a master gardener. I work out at the airport, mm -hmm. and uh, I work with Warriors Weekend here, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm a civil, uh, civilian police academy. So thank you, Edwin, for your service to your country, for his full 40-minute extended interview of his time in the Army and everything he did while he was there. Please come to CrossroadsToday.com for a link to watch that extended cut. He's got some pretty amazing stories. Adam Seibel, KAVU-TV 25 News Now. has signed two Texas property tax relief bills into law. KVUE reports the bills were passed this month in a second special legislative session. The deal's money coming from the state's $34 billion budget surplus. Under the legislation, the state would send money to school districts throughout Texas to help lower tax rates. It also raises the homestead exemption to $100,000, so long as voters give it the green light in November. U.S. Customs and Border Protection officers at Presidio Port of Entry found almost 18 pounds of cocaine inside cheese wheels. An x-ray system scanned the cheese wheels, revealing inconsistencies inside the cheese. CPP officers sliced the cheese open and found seven bundles of cocaine. Authorities say the driver, a 22-year-old U.S. citizen, was turned over to Homeland Security investigations to face charges connected to the failed smuggling attempt. A dramatic rescue by a father desperately breaking the windshield of his car in a grocery store's parking lot in Harlingen. He had accidentally locked his keys inside with his infant trapped in the car. With temperatures topping 100 degrees, shortly after the father broke the glass, the child's mother climbed inside and handed him the baby. First responders in Harlingen arrived after the infant was freed and determined it was not harmed. No charges filed against the parents. 
Well, the heat at least is getting a little bit of a break um, for today. It was nice. We saw some clouds. We had a little bit more rainfall. There's a good chance that we'll get more shower activity again tomorrow and the next day. So we'll be talking about that coming up in a moment. Stay tuned. Welcome back, everybody. We've got a little bit of weather science to talk to you about. Okay, this is a weather observation center at the top of a volcano in Hawaii. It's called Mauna Loa. And at the top of this volcano, in the middle of the Pacific, where you think it's got the most pristine air in the Earth, uh, is our uh, monitoring station since 1958 for the amount of carbon dioxide in the air. So here is atmospheric CO2 at Mauna Loa Observatory. There it is, 1958. Well, I started talking about the weather and the carbon dioxide in the air about 1990 when we were 300 and 350 parts per million. Well, since that time, we we're already at 425 parts per million, and you notice that it's getting hotter, so correlate the two. Anyway, as you see, uh, we did get uh, some clouds. Right now we're clear at 70, at 92 rather. The uh, high temperature managed to get up to 97 today, right at about two o'clock, the overnight low 76. We're a little bit closer to our average type of temperature, but it was good. We had the rain over the weekend. It's site for sore eyes. We got a little bit more today. This was yesterday, this is a weekend. So uh, up there by the, by the, by the Walmart, uh, they got 2,500 raisin. Yes, I did correct the spelling of raisin. I'm sorry, I missed it at five o'clock. Uh, almost an inch, how about that? Cuero at 23, and Stratton over there in DeWitt County got an inch and a half. And I believe it was Ganado that got the biggest, three inches. So that was one big thunderstorm. And of course, we did have some power, uh, rather some tree limbs down and some trash cans that got blown away, but uh, you can't tell me it wasn't great to see the rain. I mean, it was, a, it was exciting. It was like, oh, we're back to real weather. So here you see what happened today. Most of it has decreased now that the sun's going down a little bit. The heaviest activity was between uh, Cuero and all the way down to Beeville, but even that is collapsing. So because this is actually started by afternoon heating, that's why um, it starts at about 2 o'clock and about 6 o'clock it all starts going down. So uh, temperatures today, these are the highs. 97 in Victoria, 97 in Port Lavaca. I got to check that. 78, the high in Kennedy. Was it cloudy and rainy all day long? I don't know. Well, anyway, as you can see right about here, the dome is giving us a break. The dome is actually moving northbound. Over this week, you're going to be hearing about intense and brutal heat waves from Missouri, Kansas, Nebraska, 
all of them corn growing states, uh, and they're going to have a problem. They're going to be in the hundreds like we were uh, because the dome is now moving northbound. So even Chicago is going to be ridiculously off the charts. We now have an opportunity to get some tropical stuff coming in off the Gulf of Mexico. Now, there's uh, Don. We're not going to worry about Don. It's long gone. But we have two areas, one here right off the Lesser Antilles that has the potential for developing. It's only 20% right now. And another one actually right off the coast of Florida. This could develop and just roll up the eastern seaboard. Uh, at this point in time, they're not calling them tropical storms, but there's potential for development there. And so we're going to watch it. The day planner for those of you in uh, Quero looking for a 77 as a low, 96 will be your overnight high. And for all of us in the crossroads, a 30% chance, yay, tomorrow all the way through Thursday. And then decreasing just hot and steamy as we get to the weekend. That's your seven day forecast. Want to remind everybody we do have a QR code. We'd love for you to scan that and put Crossroads a day on your phone. That is it from the weather front. We'll toss it back to Dandy Don. Thank you, Mac. The rain cheerleader here. Sports director Gino Perez is here. Hey, uh, Gino, the Victoria Generals are about as hot as the weather. Yeah, they're getting hot and they're staying hot. The Victoria Generals are beginning to heat up. We see how they did last night after the break. Paddy Crossroads, new allegations of hazing involving Northwestern University's sports team. A member of the women's volleyball team is suing the university, saying she experienced hazing, harassment, bullying, and retaliation. The person claims she had to run extra for punishment for breaking the team's COVID-19 rules and was injured because of it, and the coaches did not play her because she spoke up. Meanwhile, a fourth player on the football team is suing the university. Lloyd Yates says he was sexually assaulted by his teammates as part of a hazing ritual. At least 15 former players say they plan to sue the university over what they say was a toxic culture within the football program. The top draft pick for the Houston Texans in the 2023 NFL Draft is now under contract for the next four years. The number two overall pick signed a $36.3 million deal, which is fully guaranteed, according to reporters Ian Rappaport and Tom Pelissero. The duo has also reported that the 
deal includes $23 million signing bonus up front, which is a first for the Texans franchise. Stroud is from Ohio State University, where he had over 8,000 yards, 85 touchdowns, and 12 interceptions in his two seasons. Saudi Arabia Soccer Club submits world record bid for Kylian Mbappe, according to reports. Saudi Arabia Soccer Club Al Halal bid over $330 million for Paris Saint Germain striker Kylian Mbappe, according to multiple reports. The current world record fee is $262 million when Neymar moved from Barcelona to PSG back in 2017. The Victoria Generals are on a break tonight and are on a three-game win streak after last night. Generals pitcher Cody Gibbs was on the mound, but he needed some help from the offensive side. The Generals gave him some help, but it was the River Monsters who also gave the Victoria Club a little bit of a hand. The defense making an errand throw back to second would allow one run to score, and shortly after that, Robert Newland would get hit by the pitch with bases loaded to bring home another run. The River Monsters helped again with a pass ball to bring home Reed Spinrath, giving the Generals the lead 5-3. The River Monsters did make a comeback to tie the game at six apiece in the eighth inning, but the Generals stayed hot and continued to score multiple runs to win the game 8-6. The Generals will host the Bombers for a two-game series starting tomorrow at 7 at Riverside Stadium. And lastly tonight, the Houston Astros and Texas Rangers are starting the Lone Star Series tonight. The Astros will host the Rangers at Minute Maid Park. The two teams are separated by just three wins. The Rangers with a 59 and 41 record, while the Astros are 56 and 44. In the AL West, the Rangers are atop of the division, while the Astros are in second. We are 100 games into the season and 62 remaining, so a lot can still change. First pitch is tonight at 7:10. Well, that's your sports, Don. Back to you. All right, Gino, thank you. We're back in a moment. California residents step up to help an 80-year-old ice cream vendor who was robbed last week. Finally tonight in California, residents in Oakland came out this weekend to support a local ice cream vendor who was robbed earlier in the week. Juan, an 80-year-old ice cream man, was robbed at gunpoint with robbers stealing $120. Money Juan says in his son in Peru desperately needs. One local man gave him $500 mm. and a hug. The outpouring of generosity brought Juan to tears. East Bay residents organized the buyout. There you go, friends helping friends, neighbors helping neighbors, 
love to see that mm -hmm. community coming behind a person desperately in need. For how, sure. And how many of those people were like little kids and bought ice cream from so we had some man. just yeah. the other day in the in the studio we, oh yeah i brought I, they had all the little faces the characters uh tweety bird batman <laughs> all of them oh so. yeah because the weather around here uh, california probably is a little yeah. bit cooler but the weather around here is yeah, yeah. ice cream around here it's necessary <laughs> popsicles yes <laughs> very necessary in fact that little man is a first responder <laughs> <laughs> folks uh the good news is we've got a little chance of getting more shower activity tomorrow and all the way through thursday this is going to lock what I call the old-fashioned weather like we used to have in the old days. Uh, just, you know, yes, it's warm and humid, but at least the clouds roll in, and during the afternoon hours, we may have a little shower activity. So if you catch one, consider yourself lucky, okay? All right, Mag, thank you, and thanks for joining us. We'll see you tonight for 25 News Now at 10. Have a good one, everybody.